Uh, so again, there you go. That was the Lone Bellow and Bleeding Out with their Brooklyn country music. And now for something completely different, as Monty Python would say, this is down home country music, bluegrass style meets the city. Not city meets country. This is country meets city. And I love it. I do. I love this band. This is the Carolina Chocolate Drops. If you've heard of them before, then you've definitely been in the right place at the right time. They're very socially active as well. On their Facebook page, under band interests, besides music and fiber arts, which are two art-based things, they have very socially conscious things. Uh, Organic agriculture, food activism, or activism. Why does that sound wrong to me? Anyway, moving on. Uh, Organic agriculture, food activism. Still doesn't sound right. Anyway, (laughs) dismantling racism and the very small task of trying to save the world. If anybody's going to do it, these three are. Here it is. This is the Carolina Chocolate Drops. Find them on Facebook, Carolina Chocolate Drops, or on Twitter, underscore CCDS. And this is their tune, Country Girl. It's Off the Beaten Path Podcast with me, Ben Merritt. I was raised in the country, that's a natural fact. Food on the table from the garden now back. Everyone working to make the land their own Red clay cracking where the silver queen grows Running with your cousins from yard to yard The living was easy, but the playing was hard Didn't have much, nothing comes for free All you needed was your family I am a country girl I've been around the world And every place I've been Ain't quite nothing like country that's a natural fact on these long city days i want to look back to see tobacco fields row after row red clay cracking where the silver queen grows follow us on twitter 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 everything at otbp podcast off the beaten path podcast with me ben Merritt, and again my duty my job what i try to do with this is i try and introduce as many people as possible 
to as many brand new artists as possible. And the best way to do that is to actually pick the brain of those brand new artists. And I got Shauna Strasberg on the line. Shauna, how are you? I'm well. How are you, Ben? I'm doing fantastic. Now, Shauna, I have to, before I get to the icebreaker questions, which I didn't warn you about, so hopefully Uh you're ready. Uh, But before I get to those, I have to warn you and I have to let you know, I had never heard of you before and I feel better now as a human being that I've been introduced to your music because I love that country music is getting back to the folk Americana kind of ways. Well, thank you uh, for starters. And um, well, I'm glad, you know, aren't we all just trying to make a little bit of a difference in the world? So now my work is done, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, what's next? Your, no, work, I... <laughs> your work is done in my world, at least. <laughs> right, yeah. Don't, don't ask my family and my mother. And, yeah, my work is not done. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, well, you know, this is my first project as a solo artist. So that's probably why you hadn't heard from me before. I was um, kind of happy as uh, part of a group um, and did a lot of background singing with people and went on the road and and was just sort of happily existing in the background. And then a few people encouraged me to uh, do my own project. And I grew up listening to a lot of folk and Americana type stuff. So I just sort of naturally um, was drawn to that sound. And um, so here I am today with well, my first project. Well, there you go. And it, it sounds spectacular. And we'll we'll talk about your background a little bit more in a little bit. And we'll talk about some, you know, doing the album and all that. But I got to ask the two icebreaker questions. I ask everyone that's on the phone with me. Are you ready? I'm scared. Okay, go. <laughs> These are really easy, I promise. Okay. Question number one, where are you right now? Uh, I am at my condo in my house in Nashville, Tennessee. All right. See? It's easy enough, right? That was not scary. Okay. okay next. And question number two can always be kind of the, the interesting one because I find that I can do two or three things on the phone, like while I'm on the phone. Uh-huh. So what else besides talking to me right now are you doing? <laughs> um... Wow. Okay. I, well, I'm sitting in front of a computer and I was doing some um, Googling and looking up um, people that I thought were interesting, but I stopped doing that and I'm completely focused on you. Um, And my cat, uh, Simon, the asthmatic black cat is uh, right in front of me and trying to get my attention. So I'm trying to get him to leave the kitchen table, and um, <laughs> that's really what's going on. It's not that exciting, is it? No, I, hey, f- uh, follow-up question to that is, was I one of the exciting people that you were looking up on Google? Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> I looked up your station, and uh, I, I also wanted to know who I was talking to. So, right. um, yeah. So. <laughs> Life was not changed after finding out who I was, though, huh? Well, I I think it's changing as we speak. There you go. Exactly. Con- <laughs> the story is constantly being written here on Off the Beaten Path podcast. So That's right. All right. Shauna, again, uh, I, I can't speak any more highly about what I heard when I listened to your album, um, but you can definitely tell that this is not really your first project. You have a big background in music. Uh, tell us about going from acapella to Americana. Oh, gosh. Um, well, the acapella band that I was in uh, was called The Flips, um, and that was uh, born out of some friends of mine in San Francisco, and it really was something that we were just hanging out in the hallways at school uh, at San Francisco State University, and we just started singing to pass the time um, and we just started writing songs. And so that was kind of improv. You know, we just sort of made stuff up on the fly and none of us really played instruments. And so we just made it whatever it wanted to be. Um, And that was amazing and fun. And one of the best things that that did was teach me about harmony singing and um, the blend between voices and stuff like that. And so I think it got me listening to music kind of in a different way. And um, 
you know, fast forward, I moved to Nashville and uh, learned a lot about country music and the history of country music. And a lot of what I'm drawn to in country is, is some of the older stuff. And a lot of that stuff is really heavy with the harmony. Um, and the older stuff kind of sounded like Americana to me. I, I, you know, I don't know that any of it would make sense outside of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, but in my head, it was a great transition. Um, so it's, it's always, um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a learning process. I think you know, oh, yeah. I'm always as happy sort of singing a folk song as I am, uh, a full blown country song with a full blown band. Um, but my taste just sort of lies in acoustic, you know, acoustic guitar, mandolin, dobro, right. that kind of stuff. Well, the 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 one of the greatest country music singers of all time actually considered himself a folk artist, and that would be uh, the man in black, Johnny Cash. And in, in his biographies, he he says, "I'm I'm a folk singer that everybody confuses for a country singer." So obviously, you know, the old school stuff obviously had its roots in the Americana and folk. So. Yeah, I think it's a fine line, and they, you know, it's all about storytelling uh, with both of those genres. So they're more familiar than than we probably think of right off the bat. Absolutely, and again, you got the new album out. Is has anybody seen my heart? And you've got one really cool duet on there, and I, I'm a fan. I've met this guy a couple of times, uh, Jack Ingram. You, you do a duet with Jack on there with "If I Needed You." Question for you, and we talked about this one off air. What do you think some of your dream duets are? So, you know, you've probably hit the pinnacle with Jack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, let me tell you, singing with Jack Ingram was fantastic. And um, he is, I'm lucky enough to call him a friend. And uh, and he's just a really cool artist and someone who really um, is so sort of true to his craft and his sound. And he's just a good guy. So that was that was awesome, and when I got to hear it back, and it was all mixed and finished and everything, I just, I, I couldn't believe how lucky I was. So that was definitely um, up there on my list. Dream duets. Um, I am. This is so sort of like left of center, I think. Um, and he's not living anymore so it would be totally impossible do well, i get to it is I a dream situation dead? it is a dream situation so yeah any anyone living or dead sure okay um otis redding Ooh, <laughs> that is good and i feel like i just couldn't sound any less like otis redding if i tried <laughs> but i am just sort of obsessed with his sound and 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 his ability to just kind of i don't know he's no one's groovier than Otis Redding, and oh, right. I think that if I could, you know, step up my game and 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 be on the stage with him, whatever came out would be amazing. But that I, would definitely be like a, a dream. Um, I think it I would. Love Pat. Hmm? Go ahead. I was going to say I love Patty Griffin. Um, she's another one. I think I, you know, the people who I think are the most amazing singers on the planet, I would love to. Um, sing with just to see if that's if I would maybe it would raise my game or you know if it would bring out something different if you're singing with a hero I always imagine you know being an actress on a set with Meryl Streep so it's the same kind of thing that, you know just absolutely I aim, think aim high <laughs> everyone always raises their game when it comes down to the you know the, the big the big moment so Right, right. I, I think that would be a huge one. That would be awesome. You and Otis Redding or you and, and Patty, and it's like, I, I don't know. On, on my short list for you, I, I could see you easily, and if you wanted this one to really happen, it probably could because he duets with everyone that he loves, too. Uh, I think Vince Gill would probably do a duet with you very easily. Oh, man. Well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. All right. The, the purest, most beautiful voice, so bring it on. Who, who knows, maybe he'll bring some of those guitar slinger, or yeah, the guitar slinger moves too, so. There you go. I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, Shauna, we're going to take a listen to that uh, that song that you did with Jack Ingram, If I Needed You, and then we'll come back and we'll chat a little bit more, alright? Terrific. I look forward to it. Mm-hmm. 